I appreciate it. All right, can everybody hear me okay? Pretty good in the back? Thumbs up, all right, cool. So my name is Eric Arbay. Um, Cliff, my, my bio did say AO Studios is my company. You see Arbay Digital here. And uh, that's because we're going through a rebrand, changing the name. I bought out my business partner. So, you know, new name, new, new website, new all that stuff, even though it's not up right now. But figured I'd put that out there. This is the very first time. And uh, like he said, I've, I've spoke at uh, WordCamp Atlanta, at Asheville a bunch. Um, it's my first time speaking here in Greenville, even though this is where I live. Helps organize it the past two years, but now I'm actually doing a talk this year, so why not? Um, but this is also my first time giving this particular talk. Usually, you know, a lot of speakers have like recycled talks. They know the content really well. So hopefully this goes okay today. <laughs> hopefully I don't burn through this in like 15 minutes and then we're staring at each other the rest of the time. I'm gonna try not to make that happen. But if we do, then we'll have a great Q&A section. Um, but this is about, and the, the title is a little misleading. Um, in the part about helping agencies reduce server complexities. We're gonna touch on that, but really I wanna like enlighten you to what this method of hosting a WordPress site is and why it's valuable and why it's, it's in my opinion, it's pretty awesome, but it does have its specific use cases. There's some situations where you might not want to use this method. So we're gonna get into this in like all of it and hopefully explain it. And it is not like super developer, we're not gonna get really into any code or anything. Um, so that was, you know, kind of like a little misnomer. Somebody just asked, this is like, you know, super developer talk, but it is not. So, and while we're, while we're going here, feel free to interrupt me with any questions or raise your hand, whatever. I'm very open to that, but there will be a Q and A section at the end. We're going to, uh, you know, cover any questions, any live demo questions you have. We'll cover that at the end. Um, and let's get into a little bit about me on the, the me train right now. I kind of just explained that. I also have a podcast called The Strong Web. I, I'm, I'm into fitness a little bit. I'm a professional golfer. I was a professional golfer. I still have my card, but I don't play much anymore. So I build websites now. So build lots of websites on WordPress. I've been doing it a long time for companies all over the country, for golf courses, golf pros, small businesses. Um, and recently, I've really got into Node.js and Vue.js. In case you want to chat about that at the end, I, I'm passionate about that. It's pretty awesome, even though WordPress is great, too. WordPress is really good. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about me, what I do, where I come from. I actually work downstairs below in uh, Endeavor, which is a great co-working space. If anybody's from Greenville, you work from your home, you want to get out of there, come down and work with me at Endeavor. Kind of a free little plug for them. All right, so uh, who here has had their website hacked? And be honest, because I know some people have a little pride, you know, and say, no, not me, okay. So we've had some people, you know, you've had your, whether it's like super hacked and, and put like, you know, Cialis ads all over it, or it's just like, you know, it, it's like a malicious redirect somewhere like that. You know, I'm sure we've all experienced that. So that's, uh, that's something that I'd like to ask just to see, because in this talk, we're going to chat about how to, how to stop that, how you can stop that, and this method will stop and, and make your website more secure. So WordPress, as many of you may or may not know, it's dynamic, right? So WordPress relies on a database that's hosted somewhere and that stores all of your content. And every time you hit that page, right, that the home page, the about page, your contact page, whatever page you built, you're grabbing content from the database and displaying it on your pretty web page. Pretend this was a web page. We'd have to go off to that database, grab it over here, and spit it back out, all those words right there. Because those words are not held on that page. That page is dynamically put together when you request it, when you go to that URL, right? And I thought this was kind of a cool little quote that I found on the web um, about uh, WordPress being like a warehouse of information. All your data is placed in like nice rows of cardboard boxes and when you need them, you go and grab them off the shelf and use that information when you want to use it. So that's kind of like a little, like my explanation uh, very quickly of like dynamic. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes. We don't have to get into that, but basically I just want to get across the fact that WordPress by itself, you know, is dynamic, right? Pulls from a database, spits out that content. It's on, uh, built with PHP, as many of you know. It's a server-side language. So, uh, obviously this talk is how do we get that to static? How do we build a static site from that? And why in the world would we want to do that? Because WordPress by itself is really cool. Well, if your site's ever been hacked, we can stop that by making your website static. So, why are we here in the first place? Why would you want a static website? 
there's lots of different uh, reasons, and there, there's some situations where it might not be good, and, and, and later in the talk, we're gonna cover like some gotchas and things like that. But um, basically, a static site closes all the doors that WordPress leaves open. You know your WP admin, your login page? If you have a static site, you no longer have a login page. There is no database for a hacker to attack. There are no uh, executable like PHP files for a robot, you know, a malicious bot to hack. Um, and it also, which is really kind of cool, it's fast. Uh, has anybody uh, remember like building websites in Dreamweaver? Yeah, some people, yeah, you know, like your static sites, that was the cool thing back in the day. Well, that's, that's like kind of right around, I got into web development, Dreamweaver was like the thing. I think Dreamweaver, I think there's still new Dreamweaver? Does anybody still use it? No. no? They still, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I think it's got a lot of improvements, but it's just not, you know, the popular code editor anymore, right? Yeah, but it's still a code editor, yeah. So, um, but anyway, to, to, to bring that way back, that's kind of when we were building like static sites, like HTML sites, right? You coded the, the home page all by yourself. You coded the about page, and then you manually linked them together. There was no database to link everything. So those are, you know, the good old days. Well, now we're back again. Like, static's cool again, right? So has anybody heard of the Jamstack? JavaScript, APIs, and markup, right? It, I, I'm, it's really pretty cool. I, I really enjoy it. Um, and as a kind of a side note, we're going to talk about uh, a hosting company called Netlify, and they host static websites. I think four or five days ago, they just received like 52 million in funding. If that shows you kind of the popularity of static sites and, and where they're going. $52 million for a hosting company. That's crazy. Which, and oh, side note, if any of you were ever in uh, Elementor's, uh, Cliff's talk in the last session, Elementor just got like eight million in funding, 15 million in funding. That's crazy too. So anyway, it's all good for the web. You know, it's all good for us as developers or designers or just being in this industry. It's really good, it's good stuff. So why static and, and what is a static site? Basically, here it is, a little like crummy screenshot of just like, hey, your about page, your contact page, just all index.html, just HTML files, just flat files, that's it. They don't hit a server, they don't do anything, they just sit there and present your website. So we're gonna talk about how you can take your dynamic WordPress website and convert it into this static set of files here, this lovely set of files. Um, so we're protected from malicious malware, which is always a good thing, especially for clients. And this is kind of where, like I said in the title of the talk, I talk about reducing server complexities. Have you ever had a uh, site hacked that wasn't yours, it was a client's website? And then the client comes to you, you know, I, sorry, I, can we curse? We can't, I don't know, I don't want to curse in here. Anyway, they're complaining to you about, I was gonna say bitching and complaining, but you know, they're like, <laughs> uh, you know, Hey, why is my website down? Why is it redirecting here, okay? So we're gonna make it more secure and it's gonna be fast, okay? Sorry, burn through that. If I get fast, let me know and then I'll try to slow it down. Okay, so the difference. <clears throat> Static were pre-generated. So with a dynamic site, like I said, when you hit that website, it comes, it's all generated at runtime. As soon as you go to like the homepage of almost any WordPress site that isn't cached, all that information has to be compiled and presented to you. Now usually it's pretty quick, but if it's already pre-generated, just imagine how much faster it is. There's less server resources, which is kind of cool. Um, and if you're about saving the planet, which hopefully you are, then a static site can reduce your carbon footprint. It's gonna reduce carbon emissions because of the server farm that's hosting your WordPress website is cranked up all day, whereas uh, a, a Netlify uh, server farm that's serving up static websites they're, they're super low emissions, right? Because they don't have to use all that energy to keep that database running. So it's kind of cool. Uh, now, again, low resource, it goes right into, right, static websites, low resource, not using all that, those components to build things from the database. Dynamic, very resource intensive, uh, they're online only. This is kind of one of the cool things about a static website. They're usable offline, so if you need to send a client a website just on a, on a, a Dropbox file or something like that, I'm gonna show you how to do that, which is really nice. If you wanna make an archive of an old site, you don't wanna lose it. You're like a WordPress site that you need to shut down for yourself or a client. You're like, but I wanna be able to show it to somebody later on. Well, you can generate it, turn it into a static site, keep it in our archive, put it in a zip file, and it's good to go. I'm gonna show you how to do it, because that actually came up exactly for me like two days ago. I lost a client, and I was like, well, 
I want to show this in my portfolio still. It's a nice website that I designed, but if I shut down the server, that website's gone. I can't show anybody else. I can't show a potential client. So that's, that's one of the, I think, one of the really nice things that you'll uh, take away from this talk today is to learn how to do that. Um, and like we were saying, security. Static websites are secure by default. Uh, does anyone remember um, Anonymous, the hacker group? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, I don't know where those guys went. Does anybody know? No? Yeah, of course, because they're anonymous. But if you ever looked at any of the leaked files that they put out on the web and like dared to click on those links, static HTML files. Because they're not going to run the risk of like putting something on a database and getting that, get hacked and then somebody finds out where that database is hosted and then they get busted by the FBI. It's a whole, you know, vicious cycle. Uh, dynamic. So security. So uh, Masubu, one of our sponsors, he's not in here right now. He's one of our sponsors. Um, WordFence, has anybody ever used WordFence or heard of it? Yeah. Right? They're great, and, and you need them with WordPress websites, right? They provide that good security. Well, static sites by default, like I said, they can't really get hacked. You're not going to hack static HTML files, so that's, that's kind of nice. So you don't need that security. You don't need a WordPress plugin. All right, so I'd like to get into some of the use cases of why a static website would be good and why it wouldn't be good. There, there's certain times where you're, you're going to need it or where you'd like to need it, but other times where you're like, yeah, I can't use it. Um, corporations. Oh, side note, by the way, I hope you all like my slides. Very colorful. I was going something totally out of the box. Hope, you know, hope, <laughs> this is not my style, but I wanted to do something different this year. Um, corporations. Does anybody work at a big corporation in here? Yeah? So you might know that you've got certain guidelines a lot of the times. They may have certain requirements that you're placed on any piece of tech that you use has to like, meet a certain security requirement. So this may solve that problem. If you're a big corporation, they're like, no, we can't use WordPress um, just for security reasons. Well, you can still use WordPress to build the site and develop it, but then turn into static and then should meet any of those server requirements and you're like good to go. Then you look like the hero. Um, digital agencies, right? So does anybody work at an agency in here? A few agencies? Yep. So as you guys know, if you host a lot of websites, like I do, I host a bunch, like almost every client that I build a website for, I host them. And um, <clears throat> you know, you could use WP Engine, uh, Green Geeks, tons of different like WordPress hosting options. But at some point, um, if you're not uh, uh, diligent about staying on top of those, updating the plugins, updating the themes, something's gonna break. Has anybody had a website break recently because of like a, a PHP upgrade or a plugin? Yeah. It happens. It, that's just like the nature of the game. They, they require maintenance. WordPress websites just require to be like maintained and looked after. Whereas a static site, it doesn't. You can leave it there forever. You can you know, check on your site you built in 2006 in Dreamweaver and you're good to go. And I'm not hating on Dreamweaver. I'm sorry. I just, you know, it's funny. Um, so you don't really, if, you're, if you host a lot of websites and you want to like, you know a client's not going to come back to you very often and say, hey, can you update it? Um, this could be a great way to just set it and forget it. Just put it up on the server, leave it there. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it breaking because of a plugin or a server update or anything like that. Um, who doesn't like free? Does anybody not like free? Would you rather pay for stuff? Nobody. All right, so I thought. So the cool thing about um, the setup I'll show you is you can uh, build a WordPress website and host it completely for free. And there's a lot of different options around it. Maybe you pay one or three bucks a month, but um, a lot of them you can get it totally for free. And I thought this was one of the really, really cool things about this method of, of building sites like this. Um, and this one, uh, what I said before, I literally just had a client um, leave us, Greensburg Country Club, Country Club in West Virginia, and they're going with another provider. I said, okay, that's cool. But I was like, I like the work that we did for them. Uh, we built them a nice website about three or four years ago on WordPress. And I said, I want to keep an archive of this to show future clients, just to show them our work, right? And so I was like, well, if I take it off my server, I shut this website down, I have no way to get to that anymore. And so I need to like, you know, put it like on a subdomain, like uh, do something like that. And I'm, now I can just literally turn into a static site, static file. So it still looks the same. You click around, go visit all the same links, and I can show it to them. Um, I can put it on a local drive. I can do whatever I want with it. And now it's good to go. I have that archive of it. Um, and this is kind of the, one of the cool things when I was uh, researching this. Uh, internet marketers can create a bunch of quick landing sites that load fast and are free to host. So, that is kind of cool. I knew a guy that was a big domainer back in the day, 
and like 2009, 2010, 2011, when top level domains were like the thing. If anybody just watched the SEO talk, she talked about like, if you had, that's why I named my company Golf Web Design. That's what I wanted people to search for in Google. And so when you search Golf Web Design, I had that domain, my search rankings are boom, right there. Anyway, this guy was building a lot of websites like that really quick, just three page websites, but getting ranked really high because he had all those good domains. He could have done this. He built a system similar in like ASP or something. He could have done this with WordPress and converted to a static site and launched as many sites as he wanted every day. Didn't have to worry about paying to host them or worrying about security or anything like that. So these are some of the use cases where um, it would be good. Now, where it's not good, I didn't create a slide on when not to use static websites. Does anyone have um, paid membership portals where you have to log in and view the content, right? This might not be a great situation. You can do it with that. Um, does everybody know Smashing Magazine? You ever read that publication? Uh, Smashing Magazine is actually a statically generated site, but they have a login section where you can log in and view your, your account, view your dashboard and everything. They use um, you know, JavaScript functions to make that happen, which is really cool. But that, all, that is all possible, and their site is super fast now. It used to be on WordPress. They're like the poster child for like static websites. They turned their however many thousand page smashing magazine website in, from WordPress into static files now. So that's kind of neat. If you ever guys just want to Google that, it's, it's a pretty awesome like case study in, in what they did. So that would be one situation where not to use it. Um, another one would probably be really if you have any kind of member login. Um, I've got uh, a lot of golf course websites that I do, and the members of that golf course need to log in to view their account statement, things like that. If I were to convert that into a static site, that'd be really hard. It wouldn't be worth the trouble. So that needs to stay dynamic. The search feature, yes. If you're using the search feature of WordPress, you're right. That, that would not work. That would break in static sites. I'm going to show you a way around that, though. So we got some like gotchas that uh, I want to make you guys aware of, but that's a great question, or that's a good point. Thank you. E-commerce. Hmm? Oh, e-commerce. Yes, uh, e-commerce is another perfect example of when this situation would not be good. I'm going to work on uh, show you guys a little workaround for e-commerce too. But you're right. If your website is like running like WooCommerce, static sites would not really be for you because you need you know you need the shopping cart to update. You got to reduce that inventory from the database. Um, but we've got, a, we've got a solution for that, too, where you could keep your website static. Does anybody uh, have any other um, places where this would not be good? Because those are obviously things I just didn't touch on. Those are great. The client, wants to be able to stuff. The client yes, yes. So that's, that's exactly the point, right? Client wants to change stuff. We're going to touch on that, too, and how to work around that. <clears throat> there is a solution. I have that for you. So, oh. Well, here we go. I could have just pulled up this slide. <laughs> uh, contact forms. That, that's the biggest one. So especially for me, and I'll show you a way around that, is that you need you know, contact form 7, gravity forms. I'm sure a lot of you guys have used those. And that, that is one of the biggest things for using on your website that like, makes it dynamic, that makes it like, really you know, maybe valuable to your clients. Because they get those contact forms, they get those leads. We don't want to lose that functionality. So I'll, I'll show you a way around that. Uh, through Netlify and Zapier. Has anybody used Zapier? Yeah? Really? Yeah, I haven't used it a bunch until... Okay, yeah, I said his coworkers use that. Met, yeah, Zapier is really neat for connecting pieces of tech to each other, websites making them talk to each other. E-commerce, there's, uh, there's several fully hosted, like implementable JavaScript-based uh, e-commerce solutions. One's called Snipcart, where you basically go to Snipcart, create an account, set up your entire e-commerce library, all your products, everything, and you just drop in a little snippet of code on your static site, and bam, magic. It's e-commerce. You, you can start selling stuff on a static site. They take care of all the heavy lifting, and it's, it's pretty neat. Um, there's lots of APIs, lots of hooks, lots of things you can do with it. Even with a, a dynamic site, with a regular WordPress site, you can still use Snipcart for your e-commerce solution. It's, it's actually pretty nice. Um, search, like you said. Uh, Algolia is a service that actually indexes your entire site. So if you did have a static site, it would index that entire site. Um, same kind of uh, method. You put a little snippet of code on your site, and they basically serve up those results for you. So it, it doesn't use the native WordPress search function. Um, it uses their own because they've already indexed it all your content. And theirs is actually like 
really good. Like their like filters and everything, it's way better than what's out of the box with the WordPress search feature in terms of like the results, you know, pulling up like relevant results. Um, and then comments. Does any, I see, I don't know, it feels like comments are kind of like on the decline. Does anybody use uh, like, like really heavily like rely on comments for any other sites? Yeah? Yeah. So I, I love hearing that, but, but it seems like more and more a lot of websites are either just getting rid of them or it's, I don't know, not as often as used. But um, discuss, and there's, there's a bunch of others actually like uh, separately hosted commenting uh, platforms that you can basically embed on your static site. Yes, sitemap XML file. Yes, that I'll show you. We're going to um, basically have that statically generated when we export our. Because the cool thing about this method is that you can use whatever, pretty much whatever plugin you want on your WordPress website when you're building your site, uh, Yoast SEO, SEO framework. And when you spit it out and get that, um, the static files, you'll get that robots.txt, you'll get that sitemap XML file. Yeah, so, so it can be really good for SEO. So static hosting options, here's some of the ones. Netlify, like I said, they're just, man, they're just killing it. Um, GitHub pages and GitLab pages. I'm sure a lot of you, if you've never used them, you've come across them at some point, at somebody's hosted their uh, like JavaScript library or plugin or something with GitHub or GitLab pages. Um, those are free. Those are, I mean, you've got to hook up a repository to it, so it's like dynamic, but those generate static websites and they're, they're free to use. Google Firebase is actually pretty cool. I've used like the Firebase as a database service before, and I never realized until researching this talk that uh, they offer like a free hosting solution. It is you need to like set up the process where it like automatically you know builds onto their hosting platform, but it's free. They've got a whole free tier, and like you know Google's pretty solid in the products they put out. So I was like pleasantly surprised to find Firebase offers that. Um, S3 Amazon S. This is one I was saying. It's like one to three dollars. Amazon S3, as you may have probably already used for storage or something like that, you can host uh, static sites on there and it's like super cheap. And then the last one, I've used this for um, random different node projects and PHP projects, Zite. It's really cool. You can add a little, uh, add their desktop app. Has anybody used Zite before? Yeah, you heard of it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is, it's kind of cool because on, on your Mac at least, I work on a Mac. You can install their Mac app and just drag a bunch of your file uh, or your folder of all your files, drag it over their icon, bam, spits out a URL, it says here's your site. It uploads everything to the server for you, gives you a URL. So if you want to show a client a website really quick, you can use them, it's totally free, keeps it on that URL and you're done. It, it's pretty awesome. You can use DigitalOcean. Oh yeah, and sorry, these aren't the only static hosting options. Uh, these are, I'm sorry, yeah, I need to preface that. These are kind of like the free-ish ones and like the, the popular ones for static hosting. You can use anything. You can use any server that you use for WordPress right now. You can put static HTML files on there. So if you have your own SiteGround, DigitalOcean, HostGator, whatever, Rackspace, yeah, any server. So, yeah, sorry. These are the, like, the, the popular ones that usually have some kind of like integrated workflow. So right now, um, I'll show you the kind of the workflow that we're going to go through. It basically takes your WordPress site, automatically sends it to Netlify, and it's done. You don't have to drag and drop any files or folders. It's just automagic. So yeah, that, that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. You can use any server you want, honestly. Oh, live demo time. <laughs> they usually crash and burn, so <laughs> again, I told you I was getting crazy. <laughs> I was, getting, was yours good? Did it crash and burn? It did. Well, I had a on this. hey, it happens. That's why I put that, because it's a thing. That's what happens when you do a live demo. So I'm going to show you guys a, oh, OK. Well, this was just my um, quick attempt here at like, hey, this is a database, right? This is what you're, where your information is stored. There's your rows of boxes that you're pulling the information from. Quick little visual. Oh, we're at 11.30, we're doing good, all right. All right, so I wanna show you guys a little um, example of a site that I've built using this method that, I, that I'm gonna show you right now. So WordPress I installed on site.wilio.com. It's just a client, something like that I'm working on. Wilio is their main website, right? <clears throat> I didn't need anything super fancy. I said, I'm gonna use Elementor, even though Elementor is fancy. 
I just said I want to you throw up a really quick site using Elementor, and I just want it to be static because I didn't really have to worry about updating it very often. So I put the installation of WordPress on site.wilio.com, so subdomain, uh, which I host on my own server, which again, in this, you don't need, even need to do that. You can build it locally on your machine, um, or you can you know, put it on a cheap server. Amazon Light Sale is like five bucks a month to host your WordPress site. So you can host your WordPress site wherever you want. But that is like caveat, you still need your WordPress site somewhere, whether it is on a server or on your computer. Either one's fine. So I put it on a server on site.wilio.com, and every time I compile it and build the static version, it automatically gets sent to Netlify where wilio.com, the main domain, is, right? Now, I know you're probably thinking, you're like, well, wait a second. Uh, if I go to site.wilio.com, right, you're going to look at that and be like, okay, well, there's that site. But then here's Wilio.com. They're the same site. So you're like, well, isn't Google going to penalize you? No, they're not, because we thought about that. So what I've done with site.wilio.com, I've used an HT access file to block it. So no bots can get to it. Even if a bot did happen to find it, they wouldn't be able to get in. So only I can get in. Right, to edit the actual WordPress site. So the WordPress site is totally blocked, password protected. You have to log in to see any of those pages. Okay, so I'm already logged in here. Let me find the mouse. There we go. All right, live coding time. So, and I really should say this is more like live demo. It's not coding, this is just a demo. So I've got my site here, and I'll show you um, these are my three pages, well, two pages really. I've got my home page and my blog. And I've got a few blog articles. You see my posts. I've got three blog articles. Those are cool. They've got some content. If I go back to my pages, I'll even show you my like Elementor view here. Some of you may or may not be familiar with this. But here's all my, my sections, right? I've got all, everything that you'd build just in like a regular Elementor. Even my, my blog posts are being dynamically pulled in here, right? So if I wanted to add anything else, I could. Oh, and uh, our keynote speaker, he's making money off of that. That little guy down there, that Monster Insights. Um, and here's, <laughs> here's the uh, uh, contact form that I'm going to show you how we're getting um, contact form results from there into Google Sheets. So if I go to back to my dashboard, well, let's make a change here, right? Um, we'll make this a lowercase b. Oops. Oh, that's, sorry, that's like in the footer. Um, we'll make this a lowercase m. Okay, so hit update. All right, so now I'm updating my, my site.wilio.com, that's or, you know, my subdomain. And I am using this, the, the whole kind of magic. Now, there are several different static site generators that you can use, but the one that I'm using right now uh, is called WP2Static. And this is, this is a really fantastic plugin. This, this takes care of all the heavy lifting for you. Now, there are others like uh, Jekyll. Um, you can do it with Nuxt. But a lot of those involve using like the WordPress API to pull in that content and then build a statically generated site. This is literally build your WordPress site with WordPress. This is not like just use it just to host your content and then have the build process over here. This is like WordPress build process all in one because of this really cool plugin. So it's called WP2 Static, and if I go to the dashboard for WP2 Static here, uh, I'll show you some options. He's got um, some like automated deployment options. So Netlify is the one we're using, but like I said, if you want to use any of those, it automatically connects. You know, you put like your API key in there. GitLab, GitHub Pages, Bunny, CDN. I've never even heard of that one, but it sounds pretty cool. Um, so a couple of options here, like basic stuff destination URL. So you put like what, what the ultimate URL of the static site is going to be. Because what this plugin does, it crawls the front end of your site, crawls all the pages, replaces those URLs. It replaces site.wilio.com with wilio.com. Uh, and then bundles that together in one nice folder of static files. So, and there's a lot of like extra options here you can do too. If you want to do, you know, add in extra things. Um, 
It's got crawling. Oh, now here's the cool thing. You're like, well, if you put site, HD access site protection on it, how does it crawl your site? Well, I gave it the username and password. So problem solved. Um, processing, relative URLs, that's cool. There's a lot of different options. Oh, the other really cool thing too, this can replace all of your references to WordPress within your file structure. So in your source code, you know, it usually says WP content slash plugin slash whatever. This can replace all of those. So it'll be like slash W slash P. So if a bot looking at it uh, would, wouldn't even know it was a WordPress site. So that's like just an extra security feature. So a bot could see that and then move on. They'd be like, no, this isn't even a WordPress site. So I'm going to keep going on. So that's one kind of nice little security feature. It's going to rewrite the internal links too. Yes. Yes, exactly. It rewrites all your internal links from that site.wilio to wilio.com. Yep. Uh, all right. And then advanced options, crawl, increment, you know, if you've got a really, the one thing I have not tested this with is like a really, really large site. I'm talking like, you know, a thousand or like eight, nine hundred posts or something like that. I'm sure you can. It just takes a little extra time to like spit out. So I'll show you how long this takes. Again, hopefully this doesn't like crash the, uh, the live demo section of my talk here. Um, but you can see at the bottom, so it's crawling the site right now. And for verification's sake, we made that a lowercase m, right? So if I go to wilio.com, yes, OK. So right now on wilio.com, it's an uppercase m. So once it's done deploying, so it's right now it's basically crawling my WordPress site, site.wilio.com. And again, that was all just made with Elementor, just plugins. I didn't create my own custom theme. I didn't really code anything. Um, it was all just drag and drop, putting the nice pretty images in there and dragging drag in the content. And now it's going to crawl the front end of the site, build up those files. And then what's really, really cool, it's connected with Netlify. Let me show you Netlify. So here's the site on Netlify. This is, again, it's a free account. I don't pay a dime. And you can see the production deploys like every time a new static site has been pushed up. Uh, it'll tell you, and it'll even like show you what's going on. Lots of different options, and one of the the options here that I, I did want to say is like the gotchas about contact forms. Netlify has a feature where if you just go into your the code for your form, any contact form, on your site, your WordPress site, and you add the word Netlify to that actual code and like the form as just a one attribute. Netlify will automatically grab all those fields anytime somebody submits it and store them for you in the back end. And the even cooler thing, this is why I said, does anybody know what Zapier is? Zapier will take that form and spit it into Google Sheets for me. So that's really nice because I have, I have another guy who, like, we're partners on this and he wants to see all those form submissions. So he just goes into Google Sheets. There it is, the shared Google Drive doc. And there's all your form submissions. So. I think we're, oh yeah, process completed in one minute, 16 seconds. So this has like three blog posts and the three pages, so six pages. Yeah, so it takes a little bit to crawl. You know, so I can imagine a huge site. It's going to take a minute to crawl all those things. But if we go to Netlify now, let's click overview, 11.37 AM, bam, published just a minute ago. So that's pretty cool. So now. Go to Wilio.com, hit refresh, lowercase m. Bam. You see how fast it, what's that? You did my work Monday. Oh, OK. Well, we'll, have to, we'll meet in the happiness bar afterwards. <laughs> it, it does, so to set up the connection to Netlify, uh, takes, you, you got to get that all set up. Mine was already pre-configured, already set up. Um, but yeah, and you can see how fast that loaded. It's a super fast loading site because it's just static. But I mean, everything works. So now if I go to like a blog article, where's the blog articles? There you go. There's my blog article. Pretty straightforward. And now, you, if you're really paying attention, does anybody know when I looked at site.wilio, the WordPress site, what wasn't here? The cache. Yes, you win. So uh, Netlify automatically added that for me. I put in my recapture key. They add that for you. So that's, that's really cool. So now anytime somebody fills out their full name and email, boom, gets Zapier, takes it, gets put into my Google Drive, done. Really kind of a nice little setup. Uh, 
Exactly. Exa yes, that's not the only option for that. You could use form spree, insert their snippet of code. I think there's several or others like that. Sure, yeah, and keep it in Netlify. Exactly, exactly. So, there we go. So, yeah, that's, um, that's kind of the, the live demo in a nutshell. Hopefully, we didn't crash and burn. Does anybody have any questions on how like that was set up? Yes. Oh, the XML file. Yes, let me show you. He asked if it, if it drew the sitemap XML file. I had a downloaded version of it to show you the actual files. Well, it should be just slash sitemap.xml, right? So let's try it. There you go. It's there. Magic. Pretty cool. Now, I, I haven't really, I don't think I've actually set up all the features like I should have to build that XML file properly. But yeah, there it is. It crawled it and spit it out. Pretty cool, right? Great for SEO. Static site XML file. So that's, that's kind of WP2 static in a, in a nutshell and how we got our WordPress site, our dynamic WordPress site to static. Yes. Right, no, 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 and it, and it won't. So right, right now, I have it just automatic, so you have to press that button. You have to say, all right, start my site export. Um, there are some hooks that you can hook into, so you can make it so every time somebody publishes a post or, or a page, um, or you can even, it's like, uh, it's just a hook, basically, so you can like ping a URL from Slack or something. So you can be like, every time I send a message to the Slack channel, deploy my site, build it and deploy it. So it can be very automated. Yeah, yeah, because you're on that site looking at that site. So, yeah, that's what you'd want to check first and then, right. yep. But, yeah, so uh, the, the question, sorry, one sec. The question about uh, what if your um, client wants to log in and update the website? Here you go. Client logs in, updates the website. Now, again, you do need to train them to say, hey, after you make an update, come in here and click start static, static site export, bam, go. Or there might be, you know, a little bit more complicated setup of a way to, automatically. Maybe you can set it up like a cron job so every night it builds and deploys or every other th whatever, so many days. I, I missed where, where you said you protected your subdomain. How do you protect that? Uh, how do you protect that? So that is simply an HT access file. Um, right now I use Rackspace and in my server dashboard they, they build it for you. You just put in a username and password. But that is in, within an HT access file. No, that's not a plugin. You, somebody uh, through FTP, um, but on, directly on your server. Somebody, there may be. Does anybody use? The, has anybody used a plugin to, to edit your HD access file? No, well, there there may be a plugin for that, but that that's a good question for Google. Yoast. Really. Really. Let's uh, let's see. They let you. Wow, look at that. That's your HT access file content right there. No, no, because there is no HT access file on the static site. Yep, yep, it doesn't. So, yeah. To, to, to be able to write into the, in the directory. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, exactly. That's exactly right. Connect with FTP, however you want to connect to edit that file, yes. But that, that's a cool little trick. I didn't know you could do that from, from Yoast. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. The, the password file had to be a separate file. I think there's two ways to do it. There is a password file, but I think you can also do it all in one, oh, okay. right? Yeah. Uh, I believe so. But you're right. I, it made the other, the other method, you do need a separate file, yeah, to hold the password. Yep. So anyway, fantastic question. That's a little outside of the scope of this here. But yeah, no, it's great. So uh, I actually 
actually just kind of came across a similar or this problem the other day. But as, as you create these uh, the static site, it's still giving you your pretty URL because it's still in a folder and it's still giving it index.html. Mm -hmm. But your WordPress site, that page wouldn't be able to be accessed by going to you know index.html, but your static site would. You can. So. Net, I can't speak to other hosts. Netlify will take care of that for you into rewriting all your, your permalinks and everything. Um, under settings, and it's like domain uh, functions, analytics, build and deploy. Yes, they will do that for you. Post processing, environment variables, asset optimization. Oh, the other cool thing, they'll do some asset optimization. They'll bundle everything and minify it for you to make it really, really quick. Um, but that's a great question. I know it's in here. I don't want to dig around too much for a second. But um, Netlify will actually do that for you. Um, so do you know what it is, whether it's just a redirect? Or like a I, don't, I don't exactly know yeah. the tech behind turning those into it. But yeah. But they, they will take that. I know that was one of the settings. It said, well, take your links and make them pretty. So awesome, awesome questions. Yes. Exactly. Yes. 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 So right. So and, and so he asked. Uh, he said it's basically uh, very similar to what a content delivery network is. So yes. So if you were using, and it's kind of funny, the other talk going on right now is about caching. So. The other kind of you know, alternative, oh, this I guess this would be an alternative of caching. Because right, there is a way to basically add plugins to your WordPress site to cache them, right? So those pages, they're already built and they're already on the same server as WordPress, right? Um, but they're cached. So at some point, they're gonna need to be regenerated. You know, the cache is gonna expire. Somebody will hit that, that non-cached page, which is not a huge deal. But um, really, the difference is these static sites, I think, really, is probably more of the security. Because with the dynamic sites, you're still going to have forms. You're still going to think that do need to come from the server, even though the majority of the site is going to be cached. But if you are executing PHP through a contact form, that's, it can't be cached, right? That is dynamic. So that's still just kind of a vulnerability or a, a login, unless you block. There's you know, obviously lots of ways around those. But <clears throat> this, in terms of like, Caching versus completely static, similar-ish, but that's static, man. You've got, it's hosted over here, it's totally secure, it's totally separate, it can be offline. Yes, yes. And like I said, really a nice benefit for just us everyday users is archiving that site. If you've got a site that you need to take down, you archive it, it's done, it's in folders on your, on your computer, and there you go. And that, that's kind of a really nice little benefit to it. For, for, for developers, this might be the case might be your portfolio, basically. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yep. He, he said basically this would be great for your portfolio for developers or designers. Yes. If you want to archive those things and keep them there. I was also wondering if you couldn't use a single multi site for your client's back end. You could. You totally could. There you go. So full circle, the subtitle was reducing server complexities. There you go. Set up one installation of multi-site so you have all these instances of WordPress for each one of your clients. Gets spit out to static sites, free hosting. You pay maybe for your one install of WordPress multi-site. And now totally free. Yeah, that has no traffic on it, no bandwidth. And everything's hosted on Netlify or a free you know, static so hosting site. Your whole business. I just saved you thousands of dollars a year. There you go. <laughs> All right, so those are the questions. And actually, beyond my questions, um, I had some links. Again, these you guys probably already know. You could have Googled by now. Just some of the stuff that we went over, really straightforward stuff. But um, I think I, we're right at the time limit. I know lunch is coming up next. Was that it? Oh, and thank you all for, for showing up and coming. Yes, 11.50. All right, so that is the end of my talk.